Road Trips and Missing Persons by Adriana in the Snow, Chapter 13 Remy was slumped down in his seat as Emile continued to lecture him on all the possible consequences of his actions over the past 24 hours. Jeezy crazy was Emile miffed about all that. Remy had been trying to blow it off, but Emile was fully, painfully aware that he'd almost lost his brother today, and Remy was going to hear about it until Emile's lungs ached. And another thing, he said, Wait, Remy said, and Emile did because there was a lace of panic to his tone. What? Emile asked. The tracker stopped working, Remy answered, pushing the buttons a little bit desperately on his device. It went completely offline somehow, Remy said. Did it get turned off? Emile asked, or run out of batteries? It doesn't turn off, and the batteries are designed to last for years. Remy said. It can even track through twenty feet of water. The only way it could stop sending a signal this abruptly is if the thing was destroyed. Emile paused. You said Virgil knows what the blinking light means. Yes. Is it possible that he knows, or, well, knows, that you're dead? Barbara did send a man after him. He could have mentioned it. Remy stared down at the device in his hands. He pressed a couple of buttons and studied the screen for a moment. You little shit, he groaned. You threw it out the fucking car window, didn't you? How do you know? Emil asked. Because if I look at the history, it was it was going 65 miles per hour down the interstate, suddenly stopped cold, and then went offline, probably when another car inevitably crushed it. Ah. Well, at least the fucker's probably okay. Damn it, Virgil, where were you going? Remy pushed a few more buttons, almost idly as he thought. Let me get into Virgil's head for a minute. Emo music, dark clothes, would rather have his toenails ripped out than go to parties, make split-second decisions based on little info. Yep, got him. Emil rolled his eyes, but Remy wouldn't have noticed as he had his own eyes closed. Hmm. So, I'm Virgil. My bitch mom killed my dad and sent someone after me. I have no idea what's going on, but I bolt out of there because fuck mom. I want to get the hell out of Dodge so I convince someone to drive me somehow, I guess. But where would I want to go? Someplace safe? Where's safe? Maybe a meal, but obviously that's not where he went. Or Janice, but he's too connected to mom. I don't really know anyone else, especially not someone who could help with this sort of stuff. Remy thought for another long moment. Oops. Oops, Emil asked. What oops? He could tell by the expression on Remy's face that he was not going to like the answer. I may have let something slip. What do you mean, Remington? Um, well, you see, Remy said, a couple months ago Virgil was being, you know, himself, a little shit. He may have possibly found some papers. What kind of papers? Emil asked. They were nothing important, Remy assured. There wasn't any dangerous info in them or anything, but... But... It is somewhat possible that they had the name on them. How possible? Emil asked, eyes narrowed on him. He asked what Green Bellow Foods was and why they needed 50 top-of-the-line computers outfitted in an old factory. And what did you tell him? Nothing! Emil glared at him. Okay, well, I had to tell him something, Remy mumbled. I just kind of said that I knew the owner well and was working with him on some stuff, and I told him not to worry about it, which was probably a mistake because he's Virgil, so then I found him snooping in my car. At that point, I had to sit him down and talk to him, so I told him a little bit about Logan. Remy, that's not nothing! I didn't use his name or anything. I just told him a couple of really, extremely, tremendously vague stories. So he didn't think I owed money to the mafia. Which, yes, he did suggest. That's worse! What do you want from me, Emil? Some common sense, Emil answered. I've been comparing you to the Rat and Ratatouille for years, but I'm starting to think you're more of a pinky from Pinky in the Brain. Hey, ouch, Remy replied. Also, I personally subscribe to the theory that Pinky is actually the intelligent one who's foiling Bane's evil plots from the inside. So there. Now is not the time, Emil said. Oh, it's not the time to discuss cartoon theories, Remy mumbled into his lap. Must be serious. 
It is serious. Virgil is missing. Don't you think I know that? Remy snapped. I know, Emil. There was quiet. Emil took a breath. Okay, he said, calmer. Do you really think he's going to Logan? He's headed somewhere, Emmy answered. And wherever that somewhere is, it's inexplicably down the most direct route towards base. Well, Virgil is smart. I don't think he'd just keep going so quickly without a destination in mind. We should call Logan. Do you honestly believe Barbara doesn't have your phone tapped when Virgil is missing? If you had one of Logan's phones, I might agree with you. But as it is, we'd be giving away our position and possibly cluing her into Virgil's plan. If he shows up at base, Logan will take him in, no question. It's less dangerous for everyone this way. Fine, Emil said. We'll just keep driving toward Logan and hope you're right about where he's going. Of course I'm right, Remy said lightly. I've got the parental instincts going on. Of course, they didn't stop that knife-throwing incident of 09. I blame Janice for that, though. Emil shook his head at him. It is good for when he tries to steal sweets, or that one time he brought home a baby piglet and tried to hide it from me in his bedroom, or when he's feeling anxious about something but won't tell me because he thinks it's silly. Remy's own fingers tapped out an anxious pattern against his knee. It also worked with the golf cart incident, but it was too late. Again, I blame Janus. He messes with the parental instinct meter. He's far too unpredictable, and I make the mistake of thinking he's responsible, which he is half the time, but the other half of the time I remember that he's still mostly a kid, and one that grew up in an unstable environment. Did I tell you that last month they went and won a bunch of tickets at the arcade and used them to get those five ticket rubber ducks and just unloaded them all over my room? Honestly, you'd think a 21-year-old would have a better use for his money, or at least have the brains to go buy them at a store. He could have gotten like 500 more ducks for the same amount of money. Of course, it was his mom's money, so I guess I can get behind wasting it on arcade games and rubber ducks. The prank apparently was based on some comedy sketch Virgil found online. You're doing the thing again, Emil pointed out calmly. Stop psych-evaluating me, he shot back. Fine, fine, Emil said. Keep distracting yourself from your emotional responses with silly stories. See if I care. Thank you, Remy replied. I will. Emil sighed as he started back up again, mumbling something about having taken away Virgil's Game Boy after catching him playing it at three in the morning. He claimed this wasn't because the boy hadn't gotten any, any sleep on a school night, but because he'd insulted Donkey Kong to Remy's face. After that story had run its course, Remy continued to babble at an increasingly fast pace about all sorts of things. Emil imagined most of the stories he spouted off were quite embellished. Emil had tried to turn the radio on once, but Remy had slapped his hand away, saying, The next one's a really good one. So he had resigned himself to his fate of tuning out Remy's coping mechanism to the best of his abilities, and just focused on driving for the next 45 minutes, which is probably why he noticed that the traffic had strangely decreased. He didn't really pay the fact much mind until the traffic suddenly increased, in the form of a wall of stopped cars. Jenkies, what's going on? he asked as he came to a stop at the end of the line of cars. Uh, Remy said, looking out his car window. There, staring into their car with beady black eyes, was a cow. As Remy watched, said cow leaned forward to drag its tongue across the passenger side window. Shit. <laughs>